Hi, and welcome back. As you saw in the intro there, I was sharpening a piece of high-speed steel. What I'm trying to achieve is a lot better finish on cold rolled steel in the shaper. Cold rolled is notoriously sort of gummy, doesn't want to machine very well, and it's harder to chase that perfect finish. So I've been messing around with a roughing tool and with a finishing tool, you know, the geometries of those, having to read up on the net and, you know, sort of trying to learn really more than anything but there's a lot of conflicting advice on the internet so really it's just a you know i've just got to experiment see how i get on and achieve you know what's, what i'm going to be happy with so in the intro also you saw i was using a grinder um, when i made those tool rests the top plate which i'll show you a picture of down here was all okay, I machined it nice and flat, but of course when I welded it together to the bit what holds it to the next you know, part down, it warped it. So the plates have always had that sort of curve in the top, and when trying to sharpen high speed steel, you know, there's that bit of rock in there which was affecting the edges. So that's going to be the first project because they're made out of cold rolled. I'm going to resurface those on the shaper. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring you in, we'll have a look at the tool geometry and we'll have a look at the shapes what I've come up with. So bearing in mind I'm no professional, this is purely what I've learnt by experimentation and obviously studying on the internet. So first of all we'll start off with the roughing end of the tool. So we've got a tool, something like this shape, exaggerated. And that's our cutting tip is here, and then we've got a grind of 15 degrees this way, and a grind of 15 degrees that way. So the roughing tool, the idea of that obviously is to remove a lot of material in a reasonably short amount of time. But also, it leaves us with an edge of something like that, or with a surface or something like this, exaggerated obviously. Um, purely because we want to move past, move through the piece of work, you know, pretty quick and get the job done. So... With a roughened tool, the reason it still looks rough at the end is because the tip of the tool, which is this part here, has left these high ridges. And that's why you can obviously see the lines as, we, as it goes through the workpiece. So if we have a look now at the other end, which is the shear tool, which I've decided to use um, and experiment with. So with a shear tool, we've got a, what it is, we've got a lot less radius at the bottom here. So in actual fact, the cut will be a lot wider as opposed to the sharp end of the tool, which is a lot sort of narrower. So if I quickly draw that, so we've got a cut like that rather than a, a small cut. And then when we're using the shear tool, instead of then coming, or you know, with the step over, over on the shaper, instead of starting our cut here, we overlap the cut. So something like that. And then as we overlap, you can see that the, the surface finish is going to be a lot better because we're overlapping and we're on a wide radius of cut. So it's a lot better finish than what this is. But also with the shear tool is whenever you cut through metal and hold it under a microscope, you'll see that there's burrs produced as well. So with the shear tool, as it's overlapping that previous cut, it will help with the burrs of those, you know, with the previous cuts also which is something else which I've been having a look and experimenting with. So with our shear tool, you can see here that the rake on here is quite extreme. It's a 60 mil, 60 mil, 60 degree grind. And so that as it comes through the work, you can see that it, it's shearing off rather than actually cutting. And that's how we can achieve a lot better finish. So what we'll do, we'll get these set up in the um, shaper and we'll do all our roughing passes on the two grinding rests and then we'll do our finishing pass and I'll show you the results which I've achieved. So we're going to be clamping this part here and that's going to leave us with a lot of stick out. So we need to support this front edge so the, you know, the metal doesn't flex when we're cutting. So we'll just put a parallel in there and we'll also put one at the back as well. 
and then we'll clamp up. Obviously, this is only a grinder rest, so we haven't got to be 100% accurate. So as long as it, you know, pulls up pretty <clears throat> more reasonably square, we should be fine. Well, the roughing pass is finished, and as you can understand, it is quite rough. So what we'll do now, we'll turn over to the shear tool, and then we'll start to um, run that and just see what sort of finish we can achieve. Well, the tool's maintained its edge, so that's good. It's still really sharp. So with a shear tool, I'm not going to be running it as fast on the stroke. Um, they recommend to run them slower, so we're going to give that a try. So I'll try 35. Um, it reads on the VFD 35. I don't know what that is in realistic terms. But we'll give it a try and see how that goes. And here's the end result. As you can see, they've come out really smooth. You can hardly see the cut lines in there. So the new shear tool, I'm really happy with. That's worked a treat, especially in, like I say, cold rolled steel. So anyway, that's it for this video. So we'll see you in the next one.